right? We feel it also. We feel that sense of joy and excitement and connection with others. We feel it when we see videos of people throughout Italy who are mandated not to leave their homes, who are singing with one another from their balconies and applauding doctors for their tireless work. We feel it in articles like one written by Naomi Ishisaka, who wrote for the Seattle Journalist on March 13 with an article titled, Coronavirus Sparks an Epidemic of People Helping People in Seattle. She wrote, in the days since the Seattle area became the epicenter of the outbreak, the outpouring of support has been moving and inspiring. On an individual level, people have offered free babysitting, cooking, and food delivery for harried parents and medically vulnerable older adults. For example, to support those who are most vulnerable in an emergency, a grassroots effort formed in Seattle called COVID-19 Mutual Aid, centered on people with disabilities, people of color, undocumented people, older adults, and others. In addition to recruiting volunteers for direct support, such as food and grocery deliveries, the group is also advocating for systemic changes that would make communities less vulnerable in the first place, dealing with those endemic risk factors. This faith that has been handed down to many of us for nearly two millennia proclaims that in response to the forces endemic within human beings, that create others and then marginalize them, God enters human life to unleash an epidemic of compassion, love, forgiveness, and justice. In Jesus, God has become the other and is the one who is rejected for continuing to share cups with foreigners, continuing to eat meals with those considered sinners, continuing to touch those considered untouchable, and continuing to love anybody considered unlovable. And to do this to the point of being killed by those in power, that's how far God goes. When we confess our own tendencies to build bigger barns for our own toilet paper and hand sanitizer, or to risk to simply confess to God the truth of our lives or the fears that keep us awake at night, we may discover with this unnamed woman that God has already set us free, not just when we die, today. If that sends us running back to our communities with some kind of good news or good action, some gift of healing or some expression of love we didn't even know we had, Perhaps that's how the epidemic of God's love for the world still takes on flesh today. May it be so among us, even and especially in this time of global epidemic, that we might be a part of the, the, the epidemic of God's love and justice and compassion. Time, we take an opportunity to enter into prayer together. And uh, St. Andrew has a prayer list um, per chain, and we, we have that published for our members to hold in prayer every week. And if you have prayer concerns that you would like to have added onto that, you can send the email those to office at standrewlutheran.com. Uh, perhaps you could put it in the comments as well, and we can hold those additional concerns in prayer together as a, uh, as a community uh, extended in place, but together in prayer. I also want to lift up a couple of prayers that are not on that list that, were, uh, that have been asked for. Um, I received an email uh, from Linda Franson um, saying that things have gotten much worse for their friend Bill, who's already on our prayer list. He's now in the hospital with pneumonia in both lungs, and they're testing him for the coronavirus, waiting 36 hours for the results, and his wife Marcia is also confi confined to his room until those results come back. 
So please read double prayers for Bill and Marsha. Also received an email from uh, Bill and Sandy Beavers. Um, they are members of our church who are on a cruise ship and they were trying to get to dock at Sydney. They have not been allowed to dock there. Their cruise ship is now trying to go back to Melbourne and they're not sure when uh, somebody is going to allow their cruise ship to dock. So for all those folks who are um, in various places around the world trying to get home during this time, and particularly for Bill and Sandy, I welcome your prayers as well. Let us uh, bring to God now those prayers that are on our hearts and the prayers of the world. Oh God, you know the prayers of our hearts and our minds before we even have words for them ourselves. And so we lift up to you all of those in any need here and around the world. We lift up to you all of those additional prayers that will be offered in the comments um, on this post. We lift up to you all of those who are on our prayer chain this week. Especially we pray for family and friends of George Parker following his death, for correct diagnosis and effective treatment for Martha Reagan, for strength for Janet Parker, strength and healing for Tandy Brooks, for healing and recovery for Mary Carol, Majel Parker, Mandy, Pastor Dorothy Cottingham, Carolyn Corney, Bob Corney, Karen Hayes, Susan Maxwell, Meredith Gossett, Patty O'Neill, Tracy Semenchong. We pray for healing, um, especially for all of those who um, have the coronavirus or are afraid that they do, and all of those with other viruses or illnesses, cancers or heart disease. We pray for safe travels for all of those seeking their way home, including Bill and Sandy. We give thanks for the marriage of John Reiser and Susan Friesen and pray for your blessings upon them and all of those living out married life. We pray for safety and protection, healing and recovery for all those impacted by the coronavirus or any illness, for safety and protection for healthcare workers, for all of those unable to worship with us, which is our entire community and many other communities. Especially, we also pray for Mar Marlene, Dave, Jean, Tara, Grace, Doug, Betty, Bob, Dorothy, Phyllis, Ed and Jean, Helen, Dave and Sharon, Margie, and Nancy. We pray for peace and strength for all who are imprisoned, blessings on the work of Ecumenical Ministries of Oregon, Holy Trinity Catholic Church, St. Luke Lutheran Church of Portland, the Flame Lutheran Church of Portland, and Congregation Shabbat of Portland. And for all of those prayers that are offered in silence or aloud now. all of these things, and whatever else you see that we need, O oh God, grant us through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Typically in our worship service now, we share in the offering of announcements, and um, you can receive this by email, this uh, weekly news. Um, Again, just send your email to office at standrewlutheran.com and Carol will be happy to add you to the list. I'm especially grateful to Carol Harker for the wonderful email she sent out to our community this week and truly the fabulous job she does putting a lot of announcements together in a wonderful, visually appealing way for us every week. Um, there is information about how we are seeking as a community to flatten the curve. Um, I brought a visual of that 
So uh, thank you to Jennifer Trom and Carol Harker for bringing us this helpful visual. What we're seeking to do is if this is the capacity of the healthcare system, we don't want it Whatever is happening in our community, the illness is to exceed that capacity. So if we can work together to try to flatten the curve, that's super helpful. Even for those of you who may not feel particularly vulnerable with the novel coronavirus, please keep in mind, here's another visual, that any one of us might be this person who doesn't get overly sick or die from the coronavirus, but uh, since it's highly contagious and since it can uh, show up um, or it can, we can be transmitting it even when we don't have much in the way of symptoms, we could be unknowingly infecting many other people. And so that's why we're really trying to work with our larger community right now, um, exercise our social responsibility to decrease the spread, and we are seeking to keep at least three feet between ourselves and other people anytime we can. Six feet is the ideal space whenever that is possible. Uh, there's information about the Lutheran Rural Relief in Gathering, and next week you will have the list of items to shop for, for those personal care kits and those baby kits. So watch for that in next week's weekly news, and if it's simpler to simply send in a check to St. Andrew Lutheran Church designated for LWR kits in the memo line, that will also do the job of making sure those who are most vulnerable in the world are not forgotten during this time. Along those same lines, want to lift up our food drive. We seek every year to collect 10,000 pounds of food during Lent. That's never a small task. Every year it feels like we might not be able to do it. That's a lot of food for the local food pantry. This year in particular, with us not gathering, it will probably be an extra challenge, and we also know that people are really um, particularly vulnerable uh, in, in our world right now for many reasons that I've already shared. And so you can participate in that by dropping off food to the, uh, to the big can that's outside the front of St. Andrew, and you don't even have to get within six feet of somebody else in order to drop off those uh, non-perishable items. And again, if it's easier for you to simply write a check, each dollar that is contributed to St. Andrew Lutheran Church designated for the food drive uh, will count as three pounds of food because we figure we can buy about three pounds of food with every dollar that, that comes in. There are a number of other truly wonderful um, ways that we can uh, live out our role at, as um, the, the body of Christ in the world, and we can seek the presence of Christ in the world. So please take a look at those um, as you are able. And please be aware, many of our gatherings at St. Andrew can take place online if people are comfortable with that. And if you need access to a Zoom account in order to do that, uh, let one of our staff members know and we can help you get connected so that your great ministries can continue to take place even when we are not coming together face to face. At this point in our worship service, we usually uh, pass these offering plates. This is how we support this ministry that we are up to together. And since we're not here in person, you um, are welcome always to simply mail in a check if that's a way that uh, you desire to contribute. Uh, you can mail that to St. Andrew Lutheran Church, 12405 Southwest Butner Road, Beaverton, Oregon, 97005. And we also have a number of ways that you can give online. This wonderful little card that Jennifer Traum made up for us quite a while ago now indicates the ways that you can give. Online, you can do that at www.standrewlutheran.com. By, you can also text 503-386-9646. Again, 503-386-9646. And for those of you who have the Fellowship One Giving app, that's also a way that you can do that. I know a lot of us are learning new skills, new electronic skills these days, and so those opportunities are all available uh, to us for supporting the work of ministry among us. Um, with all of those ministry opportunities in mind and with the offerings um, that we are all extending and sharing in, I now offer 
the offering prayer. Holy and generous host, you set a table where we feast as friends. Prepare us to witness to your goodness with every gift you have given us to share, that all people may know your peace through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Welcome you to join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my friends. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining us for this Facebook Live worship service or for watching it uh, uh, on video later. We uh, welcome your input and comments as to how we can do this in a way that even um, is more helpful to you, however that might be. We know we'll be doing this at least for a few weeks and it's new technology we are learning together. So thank you for your patience. If there were any difficulties for you connecting uh, or anything else, please simply let us know what those were so we can help to remove those. And if you have ideas for the format, we welcome that as well. We're all learning and growing together. So grateful to have you with us today. Also today, we will be having another uh, opportunity at 10 a.m. We're having a virtual coffee hour using Zoom technology. And you can find that event in the St. Andrew Lutheran Church, Beaverton, Oregon, uh, Facebook page, not the Facebook group, the Facebook page. And then that will roll right into the 11 a.m. worship opportunity, which will also take place via Zoom. And that's a technology you can use by um, using your webcam. If you're not comfortable using the webcam, there's also a phone number that you can use to simply call in uh, with your phone. You won't be able to see us and we won't be able to see you, but you can listen in uh, to that worship gathering uh, at 11 a.m. and you can also listen in on the virtual coffee hour, the informal conversation we're having with one another at 10 a.m. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us now and thanks for joining us in the other opportunities to come.